So we're in James chapter 1. Let's pray and we will get after it. So Lord, we do thank you for this opportunity to be together. And as we open up your word, just open up our hearts, Lord, to see what you have for us. I ask that you put your hand on these students and everyone watching even live and that will watch this. Um, pray that your word speaks to them, um, that you just continue to draw them in a closer walk with you, Lord. Again, thank you for these students. Thank you for the opportunity to still uh, be a part of their lives um, and just give us all strength, peace as we continue through um, this season of our lives. And we pray this in your name. Amen. James chapter 1. Verses 17 and 18. We're really just going to do a couple verses today. Um, we're thinking about, um, we're always trying to think about how to be more effective. So my thoughts maybe not go as long, but maybe I'll do more than just once a week. Um, in the book of James, maybe a couple, so it's easier to watch. It's not, you know, one long Nick talking forever. And you're probably thinking, that's just like youth group. Why not? What's different about it? Verse 17. Every good and perfect, every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. That's one of the um, attributes of God is he is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever, because he's outside of time. Um, so God does not change. Verse 18. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And we'll talk about what that means to be a first fruit. I'm not calling you a banana or a cantaloupe. We had cantaloupe for dinner, so it was pretty good. Um, but we'll talk about what that means. But if you remember last week, we were talking about temptation. Um, verses 14 and 15. But each person, when he's tempted, he's lured away, he's enticed. Um, and what's key right there is by our own desires. Uh, we kind of live in a generation and we all kind of try to walk around with that crutch um, and limp about that, oh, it wasn't my fault, it was somebody else. If they wouldn't have done that, that wouldn't have tempted me and enticed me, but it's actually our own desire. So it's not an external thing, it's an internal thing. It is a heart issue. And so um, then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. Sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. You remember the fishing analogy. Satan just lures us, and it's our desires that go after what he's trying to lure us with. Um, so if we control our desires, and he can entice us with anything, and it's, I'm good, and, and we don't get lured away. So now as we go from that, we're talking about the goodness of God. Today, we're going to be contrasting, you know, temptations in life and then looking at God's goodness and just contrasting those two things. Hopefully, we come to the end, wrap it up in a nice uh, little bow. So one of the things here in verse 17, every, every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or change, shadow due to change. God is constant. God is constant. There is no change with God. He is uh, you're not going to catch God on a bad day where it's like, oh, he's really happy on uh, Tuesdays, but if you catch him on Thursday, that's just a bad day. Uh, you know, he doesn't wake up on the wrong side of the bed. God is the same. Uh, he's always loving, always merciful, always just, always righteous, always holy. Um, and nothing changes in that about him uh, because if it changed, then he wouldn't be God. There is a... Oh, I would say a branch of Christianity, and I'm being uh, very polite in saying that, that says that God does change, that he's maturing, that he's growing up. You know, he's hitting that time in his life when his voice is changing. No, they don't mean it by that, but they do mean that God is changing and maturing. And, um, and that just goes against the whole of Scripture, that God would cease to be God if he was changing, because change is... Uh, held within time that's how we that's what we measure change is by time you know and and god's outside of time there's just so much there didn't want to get into the big big fullness of it but god is constant there's no variation where temptation is intermittent you know there's temptations they up and down um and it's like shifting shadows and so when it says that he is the father of lights it's uh, some would even put it he's the father of the lights so think about there's ashlyn so think about when 
uh, like the sun. The sun is always shining. You're like, no, it's not, Nick. At 10 o'clock tonight, the sun's not going to be shining. Well, it is, just not for us. Or if it's cloudy, the sun's still shining. I love when we go on plane rides. Um, Ashley hates to fly. I love to fly. I think it's fun. She hates to fly. But especially when it's like cloudy, maybe not when it's like warming. Uh, the last plane ride I went on, I thought we dropped like 100 feet. My heart stayed the same. I just dropped 100 feet. Yeah, it was really scary there for a moment. I remember looking over at the people I was flying with, and it was like, this could get real, real quick. But if it's like really cloudy or dark or something like that and gloomy, uh, blocking out the sun, but then you climb up past the clouds, and then it just like the sun is always shining. And that's God. He is always uh, like the sun, always shining, is always there where temptation, the shifting shadows, there is none of that with God. You know, but um, I think it's John in, he does a little bit in his gospel, but even in the epistle first, uh, John, he talks about this light and darkness and kind of like an analogy of good and evil. And so temptations, these shifting shadows, but God's goodness is always, you know, uh, God is light and uh, temptations uh, which lead to sin uh, is darkness. That leads to death. Um, I love the when when people talk about you know how if God is so good, then why does evil exist? And and what we have to remember it's a it's same kind of in in a sense it's the same kind of question is well if there's light then how can there be shadows? Well, the shadows or darkness is the absence of light. Evil is the absence of good, and good can't exist on its own. Good is is a very real. Uh, it's a it's a reality, but evil is within a good thing. So think like a shirt. If you have a bunch of uh, moth-eaten holes in it, uh, the hole is nothing. You can't show me a hole without it being in a good shirt. Or think of a wound. You can't just show me a wound. You have to show me a good arm that has a wound in it. And so evil is that same way that it's very real but it's not a thing of itself, right? Um, and so God is light, God is constant, and then temptations, intermittent, leading to sin, uh, brings forth sin and death. Again, temptation, that is luring, enticing us, but it's our own desires that we need to control. We can't control what tempts us. We can't control the things that come across you know, like a fish with the lure. We can't control what comes across us. What we can control is our own lusting and desire in our own heart to be enticed by that, to be drawn to that. Um, and then the last thing, uh, God's will, you know, where temptations brings forth sin and death, but God's goodness, God's will, his goodness brings salvation. And that's where I wanted to contrast the two. So salvation is of God's will. So if you see um, verse 18, of his own will, right? So God started this. This wasn't like us calling him saying, all right, God, we got a plan how we could be reconciled together. No, it was God calling us and saying, hey, I got a plan how we can be reconciled. So it was God started that where temptation is against God's will, right? And so God's goodness of his own will, he started this thing. He brought us forth. So God's the one acting in this. Right. Again, it's we're not saved by anything that we do. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. We are saved by the grace. Um, if it's something you did, then it wouldn't be grace anymore. Where temptations of our own actions and our own desires and our own decisions. Um, but God's goodness brought forth his action and by his word, the word of truth there in verse 18. So of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we would that we should be a kind of first fruits of his. Uh, creatures. And so God's salvation of his own will brought us forth. He's the one that acted. And then the word of truth it is by God's word. That's where this is, you know, the, uh, the Bible, another way we kind of define it is special revelation that God specially revealed himself through his word to us. But temptation, again, is against God's will. It's by our own actions, our own desires, our own decisions. And it's apart from God's word. You know, nobody's going to be tempted uh, into sin and say, oh, yeah, the Bible says that's okay, or the Bible commands me to do this. 
No, God, God's not going to conflict with himself, right? Um, and so uh, what does it mean for us to be a first fruits? Are we strawberries and bananas? Are we kiwi and oranges or whatever your favorite fruit is? Um, meaning, so like when, if, if you were a, especially in, in this ancient Israel time, if you were a farmer, you, you would take all your, you know, harvest all your grain or produce, whatever it is, and the first fruits were the first 10% that you would give to the Lord. Or if you were like a shepherd of sheep, your first 10% were the best 10% and you give that to the Lord. And so um, James is saying, you know, as he's talking, you going, going clear back to the top, to the 12 tribes and the dispersion. So this is very early uh, Christianity, right after uh, Jesus ascended. We're probably talking 10, 20 years right after that. Um, some believe that James is one of the first books written of the New Testament. Um, so this is really early Christianity. And so he's saying he's probably talking to mainly a Jewish audience that has become Christian. And he says, we're like first fruits. And if we look back at the book of Acts, you know, salvation uh, mainly was to the Jews. It was later in the book of Acts, like I think it's 15, don't quote me on it, that the Gentiles started coming in. And if you remember, Peter had that dream where there was just, uh, animals on a like a blanket or something a sheet coming down and God tells him go and eat and Peter's like no I don't want to eat and be unclean he's like I'm what determines clean and unclean and so he looked at that that dream was an analogy of uh, salvation is for everyone it wasn't just a Jewish thing but Gentile non-Jewish people were going to come in and so James here is speaking he was like us Jewish people that were saved right now like we're just the first fruits of it we're just the first 10 percent of it like there's going to be a greater harvest to come uh, because of this. Uh, another another way to think about it is, so like I've been in ministry eight, eight nine years now, uh, uh, probably a little bit more if you count some uh, just volunteering work and stuff. But, you know, the first kids in the youth group, they were just a first fruits. But as we continue on, you know, there's a greater harvest to come that more kids uh, coming through our ministry, hopefully coming um, to salvation, to Jesus. And so, uh, again, God's goodness brings salvation of his own will. He brings us forth. It's his action, and it's by his word, and we get to be a first fruit. So we get to be co-laborers with Christ um, and come alongside where God's already working um, and, and, and work with God and what he is doing. And so when you look at God's goodness, and, and so, again, we're contrasting God's temptation, or not God's temptation, scratch that, if we could edit that, that'd be great. We're talking about temptation and God's goodness and how they contrast to each other. Only God's goodness fulfills. Only God's goodness satisfies. It's only um, him that the, the hunger or the longing uh, of our hearts can God fulfill that. You know, because temptation, again, is against God's will. Uh, it's by our own desires, our own actions, our own lust, our uh, and it's apart from God's word. It's like, why would we expect anything good to come from this approach to life? Like, if we're going to approach life against God's will, completely on our own, apart from his word, why would we think anything good would come from that? Because he just said every good and perfect gift. So everything good comes from God. And if we're expecting anything good, how could we do that apart from God's will, on our own, and apart from his word? And so I uh, really just want to reiterate that is, you know, we are being tempted and that lure comes across our eyes. How do we not be enticed? We have a greater fulfillment. We have something better to keep our eyes focused on. Um, like I was talking last week about that whole lure thing. We were fishing in Colorado. Some fish were after it, man. They'd see that lure and they'd just start swimming. Other ones, they acted like that was nothing. And it's probably because they had a, something better waiting for them. Well, we have that something better. That is Christ. He fulfills us fully. He satisfies the longing in our heart and our soul. And so whatever temptation comes across us, we're not even enticed. We're not even drawn away because we're so focused on Christ. And he's so much greater than whatever would come. So uh, as I was reading this morning, so every morning I try to wake up. Well, I try to wake up. That's pretty easy, right? That's the easy part. But I, I try to wake up and do my morning devotions. And this is way of description, not prescription. So I'm describing what I do. 
I don't think that, oh, if I don't do it like Nick does, then I'm not a good Christian. This is how I connect to God. Um, we all need the word. We all need worship. We all need prayer, but it can look different. But I wake up in the morning um, and, and I've been doing an app. Uh, it's called Read Scripture for the Bible Project, guys. And so I'll, I read about three chapters. Uh, I'm in First Kings right now. And then tomorrow is actually day 100. Uh, I only know that because I'm on Psalm 100. We've been going to Psalm a day. So we do like three chapters uh, of reading. And then I do a Psalm a day. And then I read a devotion. Uh, what I read is this. It's Paul Tripp, New Morning Mercies. Um, and all it is is like it's nothing great and grand. It's like one, you know, just one page per day. It's labeled for me. It's easy. Some days it's like really good. Other days he's way too smart for my brain. <laughs> That's That doesn't take long. Um, but then I journal. And this is something I've done off and on. And I'm actually um, kind of stuck with it a little bit. Right. And so what I'm not writing in my journal is, oh, Ashley loves me and NP and AP with a heart. I'm not talking about that kind of journaling. Um, but I process what how, how God is speaking to me uh, through through his word. And and so as I was studying on James, I remembered what I wrote in my journal. And so um, uh, I usually don't share this with anybody. I don't even know if, unless Ashley sneaks to my journal and reads it. I, I don't know if anybody does. Um, some of it gets turned into podcasts. Some of it gets turned into sermons and other stuff. I'm just thinking, how crazy of a lost soul am I? But I wanted to read um, what I wrote early this morning um, where I didn't know where I was going to go in James, and it's just neat how God brought them back together. So I wrote, what satisfies? Not food, not sleep, not peace, not rest. Not sin, not desire, not lust, not money, not power, not prestige, not position. None of this satisfies my soul. And when I say peace and rest, I'm talking like me trying to avoid my problems or me trying to take a nap or something like that. Nothing of my own. Not food, not sleep, not a sin, not a desire, not a lust. None of this satisfies my soul. And Isaiah 55, 2 uh, at the end of the verse, it says, why do you labor for which does not satisfy? And that really stuck out to me. And it, it, and then as I started working on tonight's uh, message for youth group, you know, talking about temptation and talking about goodness. And it's like, why do I work? Why do I strive after what doesn't satisfy? Like, why do I even allow uh, a foothold of these temptations in my life? Because God, goodness is so much greater and then i wrote only jesus satisfies my soul his grace his mercy his love his truth his rest his peace his purpose his justice his joy his patience his goodness his salvation that's what satisfies my soul because think when we fall into sin and and we finally get real with ourselves and confront ourselves with it all we're left with is shame and guilt and regret and regret. And then we hate ourselves because we feel like, you know, we fell down the stairs a couple steps and then we got to get back up to where we were. And it's like nothing good comes from it. Anything good comes from God. All every good, and perfect. It comes from God. All goodness comes from God. Why do I allow sin to entice me? Like I need, I think Paul talks about in first Corinthians, like I need to discipline my body. Like I need to control this. And so I wrote at the end of it, why do I try to fill my life with so much that I know won't sustain me? Not only does it not fulfill, it pulls me away from my faith in Jesus Christ. It's those lures that I allow past and it's like i need to turn not even look in that direction so i just ask you what do you struggle with what do you think that oh this is going to bring me fulfillment this is going to bring me peace i like this is going to give me that like i've made it kind of feeling you know the fullness if it's not jesus it won't it might for a day, it might for a week, it might for a season of your life, but it's just a lie. And if you give it enough time, 
you go down the corridor of time eventually that thing that brought you so much life and joy or that person that you thought just brought you so much life and joy if it isn't jesus it will absolutely crumble you know not that we're not supposed to have good friendships and relationships with people and and to be god honoring towards them stuff like that but it if we are putting anything and anyone above Christ, thinking that that's what's going to bring me fulfillment, that's what's going to bring me peace, that's what's going to satisfy me, that's what's going to fill that, that hole in my heart. And as Ecclesiastes 3.11 talks about that, that we have eternity put in our heart. We have this God-sized hole in our heart. We can dump whatever we want into it, but nothing will fill it. Nothing will satisfy that except for Christ. And so, um, so I journal a little bit and I listen to a worship song and that's what connects me. That's what fulfills me. And so I just encourage you, what fulfills you? What, where can you connect to the goodness of God? Um, we have all kinds of resources, you know, there's you version, uh, reading plans, there's Bible reading plans, there's devotionals, um, there's right now media. If you don't have a sign on for that, text me or send me a message and I'll send you a link that you can set it up on your own. It's pretty much a Netflix of Bible studies. Highly recommend um, the Gospel of Mark with Francis Chan. Uh, there's a couple others that are really good. Uh, but what are we doing to connect to the goodness of God? And that's what I would encourage you uh, today. So let me pray for you. Uh, again, our phones are always on. You can call or text anytime. If you prank me, um, I will come and drop a hammer on you. No. Um, but if you need anything, if you just need to talk, it's not even like, oh, Nick's just going to ask me a bunch of Bible questions. Nope. You know, but if you just need to talk or just, uh, or if you have something going on, you want to talk through something or just it's whatever. We just want you to know that we're available to you. So, um, let me pray for you. And then uh, again, we'll zoom at, uh, Friday at three. Um, and we'll go from there. Lord, we do come to you. We do thank you for your goodness. And the opportunity that we have to connect with you, that you are the one that fulfills our greatest desires, that you satisfy our greatest hungers, Lord. And so I pray that we would open up our heart to you, Lord, that we would quit putting up uh, obstacles and barriers and quit holding up uh, uh, outstretched, like just keep pushing you away, but we would allow you into our life to lead us to guide us that we wouldn't hold you off at a distance but we would allow you in lord so father continue to lead us guide us give us strength to uh, press into your word and to worship and to prayer uh, especially during this season that we would use this opportunity to grow in our walk with you lord so, Father, we love you, we trust you, we pray this in your name. Amen.